called Kaiju number eight is worse than you thought. Personally, I love Kaiju eight, but there might be some more behind the things that we're not aware of. This is from Captcha, from the Mr. Fan Service, you know, video that we watched recently. Let's check out what he has to say. Kaiju number eight is the next big thing. The fights are awesome. The music is badass. There's yeah. some mystery elements, a bit of horror, a lot of comedy. And with the sorry, interesting sorry, sorry. concept of a 32 year old shonen protagonist, it just happens. Which is very genius. I enjoy this new representation of like older people being main characters because like the main and anime audience that grew up watching like Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach and stuff like that, the shonen series, the shonen literally means for like young men, right? Young boys. They grow up. They can't relate to like high school kids anymore. Now you got fucking like 30 year olds just like participating as the main character, which actually is pretty cool. That's a lot going for it, is what I thought. Yeah. Until I read the manga. Until he read the manga. Uh oh. Well, let's talk about season one specifically. I thought that season one was perfectly paced. I don't remember a single slow episode. And even if there was a slight moment of relaxation and celebration at a dinner party, immediately we get raided, right? There was not a single time where I thought, oh my God, this is dragging along. It was almost, a, it, it felt like I was getting dragged by like this mad dog that is just going, running, go, 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 hype fight, hype fight. And I, I, I loved it a lot, but I wonder what's going on in the manga and will this spoil future stuff? The moment it does that I will quit the video. Oh, and another thing. Another thing that I actually heard about Kaiju 8 and about the pacing of how anime only is a glaze in the pacing. The manga up to season one was a weekly release and their intention was to pump out concise, engaging, captivating content to, you know, hook the audience into. I hear as soon as the season one content is over regarding the manga content, they switched up to like a bi-weekly series or was it a monthly? I'm not really sure. And then there was a lot of pacing issues where Basically, one of the comments I read was like each fucking chapter is just like one sequence of a fight where one character is just like having a flashback or monologue without any substance and it's just dragging along. But that's like the manga experience. I wonder if the anime would suffer because because of that, because like an anime can schedule around that, you know? Mm -hmm. She said that a lot. Can I hear some Papa? Kafka Hibino is a 32 year old man past his prime filled with regret for not fulfilling his dream of fighting and ridding the world of kaiju. That's kaiju, right. Or the Japanese word for monster. Gojira. This anime proves that sometimes the best translation is no translation. Hmm? So the kaiju are monsters that um, magically spawn into reality and go around eating people. Go around almost eating people they kind of just sit in front of people with their mouths open before getting a nut well no those specific scenes are supposed to be dramatic stalling for the hero to show up by the defense force defense force the defense force is a highly sophisticated technologically advanced government agency that yep. somehow cannot detect kaiju until they appear right in front of their face a high well was it in front of their face i feel like that's a bit of an exaggeration I feel like one of those episodes when we were getting raided, we already knew we were getting raided before it was that close this up. sophisticated government agency made to defeat the kaiju using weapons and armor made from of their kaiju. corpses. Yeah. These suits here have a power scaling mechanic built into them, by the way, so there's that. Back to TV. Which I honestly, I love. I actually do love quantifying, scaling, power scaling or rankings. As much as I shit on power scalers of people that says like, oh, Goku is solo, it's in different series. But in terms of within Kaiju 8, just like having the power suit release gives you a level of expectation of like, oh, this character is this strong. or oh, this character is only at this level. Oh, this character could potentially be even crazier. And even the fortitude level for the monsters as well. Failed at joining the defense force, but his childhood friend, Mina, did not. She passed. Yeah. She's in the defense force. And now Kafka himself is stuck in a job he hates, pretty much cleaning up after her. Until one day, a new Kohai comes along. Kafka saves him like a badass. Let's and go, Reno. And then convinces Kafka to try out for the defense force one last time. And like the perfect convenience of it being the last age requirement, like 32 is the cutoff and this is it. One last shot at his dreams. How many? <laughs> Why is this dreams? The two girls, hey, I feel like this isn't from the anime. But what was it? I think this was his fifth time? 
I don't I don't remember how many times he's tried this shit and failed. Redemption. One last chance to become who he wants to be. Then Kafka eats the hair of the number one hero. He eats a kaiju bug <laughs> thing. Uh, yeah. Which is never addressed again. Which is very interesting. We see a we see it again at the end of the season one. And I'm not sure. Like this thing said found you and then it deep throated Kafka and then we turn into a monster. But now we have our own like autonomy over the monster and it's helping us fight against the monsters. So this is Kaiju 8 that escapes because I don't know. I have no idea. The whole mystery of this Kaiju is very interesting though. Gah. Which is never addressed again. And instantly becomes the strongest character in the show. Kaiju yeah. number eight. It sounds like I don't like it. I know it sounds like I don't like it, but I really have enjoyed the anime so far. Okay. It's pretty awesome, as long as you don't really think about it. Like, uh... Like what? the fuck does she have a giant domesticated tiger? Studio it. production IG is... Is it that big of a... I don't know. Is it not that believable that she has a huge white tiger? In a world where we're getting invaded by Godzilla's? And the tiger's supposed to be a parallel to the cat that she lost as a kid. Remember how sad she was? And now she's better and badder with the huge white tiger? Giving Kaiju number eight the royal treatment. So obviously the production is amazing. Animation and fight scenes are awesome. There's things exploding. There's guts flying everywhere. It's raining blood. <laughs> OP is great. The song is unique. Vis this song is unique and a lot of people hated it because it was unique. There is so much hate for the Kaiju 8 opening, remember? I think some people are saying the theme of the song did not match the tone of the anime. Duels are awesome. And the main theme for Kaiju number 8, the character, not the show. That shit goes hard. It's all like... It was very hype. The characters are kind of generic and tropey, but they're at least likable. We've got hot-headed, small-chested, tsundere, tsundere, with twin twails, tsundere, with twin twails, with twin twails, fuck, with twin I'm actually developing ADHD and schizophrenia from watching these edits. Tsundere, with twin tails, Janos, Bakugo, rich guy, strong guy. I feel like this isn't even Gen Z editing anymore. This is like Gen Alpha Skibbity app, like editing. Asian guy with squinty eyes, plank of wood for a personality that Kafka wants to bang. But even though Kafka himself isn't actually much of a shonen trope, it's actually pretty cool and unique to have a 32-year-old main it character. It is. For sure it is. A passes prime, one last shot, story of redemption. Mm -hmm. I'm not 30 myself yet, but it is nice to see some mature... Who the fuck am I kidding? Kafka personifies everything wrong with Kaiju number 8. I... I, I, I'm not sure exactly what he's going to complain about Kafka right now, but I have heard this talking point about how Kafka is not acting as a 32-year-old should and that he's pretty much just like a high school kid in the body of a 32-year-old. I think that's what some people are complaining about. Caught up to the manga in Jesus Christ. The right And again, we're not even in the manga part. As soon as he fucking starts talking about the manga shit, I will fucking end this video. But like... I hear, in, in the anime so far, I didn't feel anything so different about Kafka and his age. I thought that this is a relatable character who seems to be trying to be hip with the kids and, you know, fucking trying to be in with the culture, trying to have a young mindset of, you know, and trying to try new things. Even if he's 32, he's being open-minded and trying to adapt around the environment he's in, but I wonder what it is. And he dives off a cliff so fucking hard. Does it? realize it was always terrible to begin with. Kaiju the really? Bite is an overly generic, painfully predictable PG-13 shonen wearing the skin of Chainsaw Man that completely wasted its potential. Casting a... Holy shit, the amount of anger he has for Kaiju 8 right now of the manga is insane. What happens? 32 year old is the main character for absolutely no reason. Turning him into a generic 16 year old shonen protagonist. See, he just turns into a Kirito? In a 32 year old's body. <sighs> like, I can't really counter these points because I have no clue what he's referring to in the manga. Because again, that's, you know, spoiler fucking territory, right? I only know of season one anime content and I thought it was really good, but it seems like the base of the argument here is like Kaiju 8 is shit because the manga just turns into a free fall nose tackle. Okay, let's explain why it's so bad. Without okay. spoilers, of course. The okay. idea was so good, it's just... Uh, sorry, ma'am. I was just noticing your muscles. What? Mm-hmm. What muscle? 
Girls have different sets of muscles. More tone definitions, but yeah, no muscles here. The fuck? Okay, that was actually pretty funny. This is nuts. I wouldn't recommend getting too attached to your colleagues in this business. Anything can happen to anyone, anytime. Oh. So there must be People can real die. danger for the cast in this show. So that was a... Well, no one died in season one, but based on your... How do I say? Energy towards this review of Kaiju 8 and the disappointment you have. I'm just gonna assume that no one ever dies in the manga either. A fucking lie. None of the cast is ever actually in danger. No one dies. Every single fight goes like this. The good guys are about to lose. Oh no. And then someone comes and saves them or they yeah. get bullshit power up. Turn it around and win. And you can only- But that is the hype formula and they execute it pretty well to the point in season one. I don't feel like it is ruining. In fact, I am actively anticipating and waiting for that moment. We do that so many times before it gets old. But this is ev Hey! Why is this shown again? What the fuck is going on here with Zenitsu, bro? But this is every single goddamn fight. There are no stakes in Kaiju number eight. The characters hmm. say the danger is real. Some of you will die. The sh it's just like. I did feel the danger though. I did feel like, especially when Vice Captain was fighting Kaiju number nine or number 10 or whatever that number was, right? The red guy. And like, his like power suit was running down and he was almost getting exhausted. And it's like, holy shit, what's gonna happen? Like, I never thought that he might actually die, but the dangerous stakes were all there. I felt it did not feel like a swordsmith's village arc to me, like in Demon Slayer, right? But I haven't read the manga. I'm just speaking as an anime only watching season one content. And not a single point did I ever think that it's just boring. Everything's going to be fine. It was like, oh shit. I feel like things there will be fine. But how are we going to get out of this one? Joe tries to make you believe the danger is real. But the mm. danger is not real. A prime example of how the series pretends to be mature. And then mm. it's not. The plot armor is absolutely insane. Kind of like the power scaling. In Kaiju number eight, humans have synchronization levels from zero to 100%. Yeah. Kaiju have fortitude. fortitude levels from zero to 10.0. And these numbers are pretty much hard power caps that cannot be overcome. Actually, sometimes you can beat the numbers, I guess. But only if you scream really loud. Oh, the villain got away. What? Reno, like activating a higher like output of his suit because he was emotionally charged to protect his friends? That. Was it ever told that it was like capped forever? I thought that you could continuously increase the output based on your synchro level, which is, I, I don't know. It, 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 was, was this an atrocious moment? Oh, the villain got away because- He got because away. the writer needed them to. Uh -huh. Th that is a valid concern. I always see this shit where the fucking villain gets away and you're like, what the fuck? But it's like, no, 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 we can't have him die right now. He's important for the future. Needed them to. Uh -huh. There are about 30 chapters in the manga where I swear to God, the only thought that crosses any character's mind is I need to get stronger. I need to get stronger. I need to get stronger. Need to get strong yeah, that is a very... One of the most important things is the characters to realize how weak they are and if they could have more strength and they could protect their friends and that's what pushes them forward, right? <laughs> does this guy tell Hoshino that he should give up on kaiju hunting because swords and melee weapons are useless? When that was his dad, right? What was the specific logic? Something about the swords. I forget the actual logic by the dad, actually, but he did try to prevent his son from, you know, getting in there. And that's clearly not the case. And again, with the type. I guess other characters, and maybe this is a little bit of spoiler panels. I don't really mind. It's out of context, but yeah, we did see, you know, Kafka's dad. Sorry, not sorry, not Kafka's dad. Uh, uh, Twin Tails, fucking, uh, fuck, Shinomiya. <laughs> Her dad actually used the melee weapons. It was really strong, but those are like, what was it? It was like a kaiju weapon. Kikoru, yeah, that's right. Weapons are useless when that's clearly not the case. And again, with the tiger, I, I mean, it is touched on briefly, and I mean. Was it a comparison with the old gen to new gen? Like simple as fucking swords versus like kaiju technology? And if you look at the kaiju gauntlets, that was like a numbered series. And it had like ranged a little bit, right? Because through like, I don't know, some kind of pressure attacks with each single punch. Very briefly. Much, much later in the story. But when it happens, it kind of just feels like the author was like, oh. Oh wait, I forgot to explain why Mina has a fucking tiger! All of these small... In Is it that big a deal? I can't tell. 
if he's genuinely triggered by Mina having like a white tiger, like I, I, or if he's just like doing these edits to like seem funny, I, I, I don't get that. I, the entirety of this video is me trying to figure out like, is he genuinely upset? Or is he making these edits to seem upset for content? I, I, I honestly don't understand. Small individual flaws seem like petty complaints because they are, and you can definitely ignore them. But the problem with Kaiju number eight is that they build up over time like yeah. black until they become just absolutely unbearable. And now we come to Hibi no Kafka. the crux, the linchpin, the manifestation of everything wrong with Kaiju number eight. A 32 year old man past his prime, striving for that one last chance to yeah. be who he wants to be. That just gets thrown out the window. Kafka is a man child who acts like your typical teenage shonen protagonist and whose age. He is 32, but like the, I, I feel like. Just because he's old doesn't mean he's mature. And I thought that he was always trying to adapt to his cohort and try to be all fresh and lively. And that's why his personality did not fit of that of like a 32 year old. Becomes only ever relevant as comic relief. So, you know. Fuck you old people. Being old sucks. If I ever get old, I'm just gonna Kafka is a... Also like, I know of people in their 30s that act like this though. Like, is Kafka that... Is he that unbelievable? I don't know. Like, I've seen plenty of motherfuckers in their 30s that act pretty immature. And I've seen plenty of people in their 20s that act more mature than the people in their 30s. Human starts off as really weak. Yet he finds these creative ways to be useful through... And another complaint that I'm hearing right now is from Osan Newbie Adventure, where, like, Rick does not act 30 or something. A lot of people seem to have this like notion that once you turn 30, that you are no longer a fun human being and that you are just boring and you have the energy of Joe Biden. I think a lot of like young kids have this understanding that they <laughs> like as soon as like you turn this eight, it's like no more fun. You're supposed to be a grandpa zombie now. Knowledge and experience for the first few episodes. And then, never again. Now he just becomes number eight and punches things. Which makes you think, why? 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 Why start with the middle-aged man premise just to make him act like a kid? Why? Why? It was very apparent to me because they're trying to tap into that shonen audience that watched the original big three, like Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, maybe in Dragon Ball, right? And those characters were high school kids, and they were high school kids when they watched that shit. And now they grew up, and now they're older, and now those older people cannot relate to My Hero Academia or Jujutsu Kaisen because they're not fucking kids. And instead, they decided let's market these shonen animes to that legacy anime watchers by making them 30 so it's a little bit more relatable. I thought that's the whole point. Put on this facade of a mature, dark series just to devolve into the most inoffensive, predictable, stereotypical battle shonen. Ludwig just got shit there for a second. <laughs> for whatever reason, Ludwig just got a fucking stray bullet here. One second. Man premise. Just to make him act like a yeah. kid. Why put on this facade of a mature dark scene? Wait, wait, wait for it. Just to devolve. Wait, wait for it. Into the most inoffensive. <laughs> Ludwig just getting shit on for no fucking reason. The predictable, stereotypical battle shonen. That Whoa! What'd you just say? Hold the fuck up. What did you just say that synchronized with the frame of a black man eating watermelon? Hold up, hold up. Most inoffensive, predictable, yeah. stereotypical. Are you black? Captain, my man, are you black? Because, like, I don't know. I, I, it's a. Uh... <laughs> Anyways. Battle Shonen that you have ever seen. Who is this series made for? It's not. Legacy shonen watchers that have grown up and can relate to older main character who acts like a kid. Not made for kids. The main character is 32. It's not made for adults. All the mature themes. It is totally made for adults. The mature themes. Adults can enjoy like a battle shonen with like an older character. It doesn't have to be a dark seinen. It's a shonen. And concepts are completely forgotten as the story goes on. Kaiju number eight doesn't know what it wants to be. 
and it suffers because of that. It's not terrible. The anime is still hype, and the first season should remain... Yeah, the first season, again, this is the depiction of the horse, where obviously in the beginning it's really good, and then it gets like, uh-oh, what's going on? Then by the end, it's just like, holy fuck, it just fell off. Just like New Gate finale. Pretty good, at least. Let's see. 19 chapters and 7 episodes, that's 2.7 chapters per episode. 50 divided by 2.7 is 18.5. The anime will eventually fall apart, just like the manga. But that should- I keep hearing about this, though. Like, the content that the anime season 1 has covered was fantastic. Even in the manga. But as soon as this shit ends, as we go into the next arc, I hear that it kind of really does fall apart. Who knows how true this is? I haven't read the manga. All I can do is just really wait for season two. Shouldn't happen until late in the second season. Why is this being promoted as the next big thing? I do not know. If you can turn your brain off and just in. Why is it being promoted as the next big thing? Marketing campaigns. Would you not want to advertise your product as best as you can? It's not about whether or not it is the next big thing. It's about trying to always push new big IPs and titles to be the next big thing. Enjoy it. Kaiju number eight is a great time but the moment you stop to think about it is the moment that you realize the but that's the problem <laughs> i don't watch kaiju 8 to think this is not a deep fucking story i don't think it was ever trying to be a deep story i thought it's a very superficial sorry surface level shonen series that just has hype i have my interest in you know sometimes i want to eat at really fancy restaurants right sometimes i just want to eat fucking 7-eleven pizza at three in the morning in the parking lot Kaiju 8 falls into the latter category where it's just junk food for me and it's fucking hype. Wasted potential of what could have been. Thank you, too. <clears throat> Thank you, too. Baron Windy, Ben, Duck. And that's the video. And, you know, the like to dislike is honestly not that bad at all. I think that this is a pretty interesting video where the points that he's making is very obscure and vague because obviously he's trying to prevent the, you know, the spoilers of the manga from happening. And that's his video. Go check it out if you guys want. But. Personally, I, like, even he admits that season one was good. Yes, season one of the anime was pretty good. All the complaints that he made about Kafka being, like, an unrelatable character because he's supposed to be 32 but acting like a shonen kid, I don't think that's appalling. In fact, I think it makes sense that they would market this to, like, a legacy shonen audience, again, that grew up watching these old-time, you know, shonen shows and no longer can relate to being a high school kid. So what do you do? You market a 32-year-old. But it doesn't mean that every 30-year-old, as soon as you turn 30, they just turn into Joe Biden. I think a lot of people in the 20s act more mature than their 30s and vice versa. I think that mental maturity is separate from age. And I guess a lot of the complaints are that he doesn't act his age. I can totally see that. Never was too big of a deal for me. In terms of the dark elements, I'm not sure if Kaiju 8 was ever really dark. Just because they mentioned, you know, themes of people dying because the vice captain says so. I was like, yeah, but it's a shonen show. Maybe one motherfucker will die in the future, but or maybe in the flashbacks, but I never thought that would really happen. And in terms of the white tiger thing, I think he's just memeing. Like, if you can believe that Godzilla is just attacking every other fucking day, why can't you believe that this, you know, white tiger as a pet exists as a reference to the cat that she lost when she was a kid? Half of me can't really comprehend his criticism because, again, these are vague takes relating to manga. But again, we'll just have to see if the anime will cook. We'll see what happens. I heard the sales were... I don't even know what the sales... I thought he was going to fucking talk about the sales rather than give a, you know, an obscure review about the anime based on the manga shit. But it is what it is, man.